Well, you guys have all seen this before, cornhole boards. It's probably a million people put up a video making them, and there's really no need for me to do it either. What I'm showing you here is a set of boards that I made probably three years ago. Anyway, my uh, youngest son's going away to college. He says he's taking these boards. So These things have gotten really fancy. People are putting LED light strips in them now. People put Bluetooth speakers in them. These are actually a little more fancy than I like, and now that they're gone, and I thought, I'm not even going to go buy any plywood. I'm just going to use the scrap wood I can find here in the shop and make a replacement set. And, uh, you know, I had some of this left over. This was mahogany paneling that somebody tore out of a house, and it was in pretty rough shape. You can see, uh, you know, the boards are pretty well cupped. You know, some of the tongue and grooves are banged up and torn off actually uh, some beetle holes in these things are scratched up uh, there were some outlet holes cut in them they're in bad shape but they plane up pretty nice so <clears throat> figure why not make a cornhole board with tongue and groove top so that's what I did so the basic frame for this um, cornhole board is done and just a pocket hole screwed these things in I didn't even glue these joints here and uh, the reason is <clears throat> once I put the top one, the top will be glued and screwed. Um, everything's going to be locked in tight. So I don't think there really needs to be any glue in the joint, these butt joints here, you know, which are pocket hold. Okay, so uh, just piecing together the top of the board and, uh, you know, I have a bunch of the, the uh, tongue and groove already planned, planed up. Um, that's so what I do is uh, just come over here. I just kind of fit it in nice and tight. And I leave about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch overhang. And uh, on this end, where there's a lot of overhang, I just take a pencil and like hold it flat to the side of the frame. And that gives me about that 3 16 of an inch spacing. And I just strike a line here along that board. So now I can just remove this board, take it over to the chop box, cut it. And that way I have, you know, the least amount of waste. I, I finished decking out the top of the, uh, the first board. And, uh, <clears throat> and I just took uh, a flush trim bit with a router and flushed up the edges. But uh, before I do the round over, I went ahead and took all the pocket screws out of the perimeter. You know, they've already done their job, the glue's dry, and, <clears throat> you know, these pocket hole screws do come real close to the surface, and I want to put like a 3 8 inch round over, and I don't want to be picking off the tips of those uh, screws, so now that it's dry, and just finished taking the router and a round over bit to uh, both boards, uh, they came out looking probably too good to be cornhole boards, but they are really just crappy reclaimed mahogany and I, and I do mean that it was pretty crappy. Okay, so you're looking at the underside of the cornhole boards and it seems like I might have put a lot of uh, reinforcing in here and to be honest with you, it's not 100% necessary, but I did want to incorporate a built-in storage location for the cornhole bags. Uh, so that's what this is going to be. Uh, the bottom of that board looks exactly like this one. So when these boards are stored, they'll be folded on top of each other and it'll just create an enclosure right here. Uh, they'll be latched together with some buckle straps. And uh, now, re that way with regards to the, the cornhole hole, it's going to go right here, a six inch diameter hole. Uh, it would concern me that these tongue and groove boards might be a little flimsy because you got the hole here and these edges would kind of be unsupported. Um, they could after a lot of use because I'm going to hit that the edge of that cornhole almost every time. Uh, it could become loose and flimsy so I'm going to uh, reinforce this the spot where the hole is going to go. So this is how I'm making my hole reinforcement. Just taking another piece of mahogany that I've glued up and you can see I've traced that six inch uh, diameter circle with a compass right there. So basically you're just going to drill a hole here 
use your jigsaw. Don't get right on the line, but just get close to the line, like maybe an eighth of an inch away from it. Take it out. Um, <clears throat> I've already done that with the other one. Uh, you end up something like this. And then just take it over here to your spindle sander, but then you can just use this to really sneak up on that line and get like a perfect circle. So here we go. We got our perfect circle. And then I'm going to fix it to the bottom of uh, the cornhole board. Okay, next step. We're going to cut this hole from the top side roughly. We're not going to get right on the line. We're going to be inside the line by about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch all the way around. Just open this hole up. All right, there's the basic glue up. Just got both these things in here clamped on. And same thing over here. We'll let this glue dry and then we'll take a flush trim bit and we'll get this uh, top circle nice and nice and flush to that perfectly round circle that we we did over there on the spindle sander. So working on the legs. Um, yeah, you know, everybody pretty much does in the same way, minor differences here and there. Um, one of the things that I did is I added this piece in the corner and it, it serves two purposes actually. Number one, uh, it gives a little more beef to this one by, this is not even three quarters of an inch, this is 11 sixteenths thick. So this doubles that up at least a little bit, gives it some more bite for the um, carriage bolt that's going to go through there. Also, I build my cornhole boards so that they nest in to each other and then can be buckled together uh, and stored on edge and with this right here I have a couple on this end and then over on the other cornhole where these legs are going to go same thing and <clears throat> when you nest these things you have to like you know turn them 180 to each other so those corners will actually locate and positively um, fix the corn boards on top of each other so they can't slide around on top of each other. All right, so these are nested together, buckled up with those light duty buckle straps and sitting on the feet. You can see the, uh, the feet here, they can sit on either side. One of the things you might want to keep in mind if you plan on doing something like this, when you buckle these things or install these buckles, Make sure the buckle with the actual moving latch is on the top by the cornhole and that the catch is on the bottom without the cornhole. Three coats of Danish oil is what it worked out to. You know, once you take the uh, mahogany down to bare wood and then start from there, you know, one coat's not enough, two coats is close. Three coats really takes it to where you want it to be. So that's where it's gonna stay. I've seen people get nuts on YouTube showing you eight coats of Danish oil on mahogany. I mean, at eight coats, you're just putting oil on top of oil. It's not even getting the mahogany. So I don't know what, you know, I'm not an expert, but Jesus, I, I, don't, I don't think it's, this is pretty much done deal here. You know, everything looks uniform. Um, and it's fully saturated. I put one coat. You know, I only put one coat of Danish oil on the inside and the underneath. I mean, you know, despite, you know, what you may have heard on the internet, I'm not a complete and total maniac. So I know that there's going to be a lot of people saying it's stupid to run the, uh, the tongue and groove on an angle like that because it's going to want to deflect the bags as you're playing them and I'm here to tell you that is absolutely not the case whatsoever. Uh, the bags slide perfectly straight and true, just like if it was one solid piece of plywood. And in fact, I'll show you a video of me throwing from regulation distance and how the bags actually react.
Okay, so I, I wanted to show you our scoreboard. It's an integrated scoreboard. And basically, it also functions as like a, an extra stabilizer. It's just a stretcher that goes between the legs. And then, you know, I've drilled some holes, similar to a cribbage board. I've just taken a rubber stamp with some ink and stamped the numbers all the way from 1 to 21. <clears throat> so, I had to make my own pegs scoring pegs and um, you know we're going with this Americana theme with these bags we got blue and white and we got red and white so we made a custom blue star with white stripes and of course the red and white stripes of the flag so that's it that, so. um, you know, very understated, but nice set of boards that as you play them and as you use them, you really appreciate the quality of craftsmanship. You know, nothing wrong with these boards. In fact, my son likes them better, so he can have them. I'm kind of done with all the flashy wraps and vinyl and decals and LEDs. I mean, give me a cornhole board. Give me a beer and let's play.